Chapter 7 Plate Tectonics Continental drift was an idea before its time. Alfred Wagner first published his hypothesis in 1915. He published a book called The Origin of Continents and Oceans. The continental drift hypothesis he discussed talks about a supercontinent called Pangaea, which began by breaking apart about 200 million years ago, and the continents drifted to their pres present positions. These continents broke through the ocean crust. Okay, So here's a diagram of Pangaea uh, about 200 million years ago. So most of the continents we know of, like, like North America and South America and Africa and Australia, here's India, okay, we're all kind of attached together as one giant supercontinent. And this is a modern reconstruction, and down here is a diagram from Wagner's um, Pangaea. Okay. So he used, the evidence that he used included the fit of how South America and Africa seem to fit together, okay, the fit of the continents, like puzzle pieces. Also fossils that matched across the seas, so when you fit the continents together, then you see where fossils lined up that were the same on each continent. Rock types and structures also match, such as mountain, mountain chains. Okay, then also lining up of ancient climates. The main objection to Wagner's proposal was that it didn't provide a mechanism as to how did those continents drift. Okay? So here we have, if we put North America together with, with um, Europe and Africa, we have the Appalachian Mountains lining up with the Caledonian Mountains. Okay, so we have a similar, similar mountain ranges that when you put them together actually form one mountain range. Okay. Now we actually have a different theory or similar theory called plate tectonics. Okay, the new paradigm. A paradigm is a scientific school of thought, way of thinking about things. Uh, it's more encompassing than continental drift. Okay, they actually provides a mechanism. Okay, so this is associated with Earth's rigid outer shell that we call the lithos lithosphere, and it consists of several plates. And these plates are moving slowly. The largest plate is the Pacific plate. Okay. Plates are mostly beneath the ocean. Okay. Now the asthenosphere is underneath the lithosphere. It's hotter and weaker than the lithosphere, so it allows for motion. So the heavy, heavy amount of pressure and, and heat as the, the rock of the lithosphere becomes more plastic, so it allows it to flow a bit. Okay, that allows the stiffer lithosphere on top, those plates, to be able to move. Now plate boundaries are where different plates interact. Okay. There are three main types of plate boundaries that we'll talk about. First one is divergent plate boundaries, where plates move apart. These are constructive margins where new crust is formed. So as two plates move apart, mantle materials upwell and create new seafloor. Ocean ridges and seafloor spreading occur at this location. Ocean, ri ocean ridges develop along well-defined boundaries. Along the ridges, seafloor spreading creates new seafloor. So here's a diagram. We have here's a, the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, or actually where two plates under the ocean are pulling apart. Okay, And where they're pulling apart, there's actually a lowering in the, of the Earth's crust. So there's less pressure on the material below, so with less pressure, the boiling point, the melting temperature, uh, lowers. So part of the um, rock will start to melt and upwell and form new crust. Okay. okay, so continental rifts form at spreading centers within a continent. So we may also have divergent plate boundaries uh, in the middle of a continent. Okay. Now convergent plate boundaries are destructive margins. These sort of plates are being pushed together. These plates collide. An ocean trench forms as the ocean crust subducts or slides underneath the continental crust. And the lithosphere is subdu so it's subducted down into the mantle. Okay. So here's an example of the East African rift, rift, a divergent boundary on land, where two sides of the plate are pulling apart. Okay. And here's another piece where it's pulling apart and, and uh, in here too. Okay. So as as these plates move apart, and there's a lot of volcanic activity, a new crust may be formed, but also it's a depression, so then water will accumulate and slowly um, um, you know, form. Here's a new sea that's formed, and eventually these two plates will pull far enough apart that we'll have ocean here. 
Okay, so with these convergent plate boundaries that are destructive margins, the plates come together. We have ocean continental convergence, okay, so where the ocean meets the continent. The denser ocean slab sinks into the stenosphere. Remember, it's denser because it's made out of basaltic um, rock, which is full of the heavier dark silicate, so it's more dense material. So it's heavier, it will, it will sink below the, it'll be forced below the continental or lighter rock, okay. Pockets of magma will develop and rise up, and that's just past the edge of the continent, forming these continental volcanic arcs of, of mountains, such as the Andes Mountains and the Cascades and the Sierra Nevada system. Okay, so here, the diagram of the ocean crust is meeting the continental crust. The denser rock is going to be forced to push down below the lighter rock. And as this rock is being subducted and pulled down under, eventually it'll get to a point where it's going to start melting. Okay, so the ocean water comes through here too. This volatile water assists with this partial melting and magma, which is, will start rising up, forming these continental arc mountains, uh, volcanoes, uh, where the ocean and ocean plates converge. Okay, one slab will still descend below the other. This often forms volcanoes on the ocean floor. These form volcanic island arcs when these volcanoes get tall enough to reach above the surface of the ocean. Okay, these examples are the Aleutian. Um, islands, Mariana and the Tonga Islands. Okay, so here's a diagram. So you have two ocean plates converging, pushing against each other. One side subducts, and with partial melting rising up, will form a chain of volcanic islands. Okay. Now, as continental continental convergence, that's a little different because neither plate side of the plate will subduct. They'll push against each other, they'll collide, and they'll form new mountain ranges, such as the Himalayan mountains. So here we have, as India is push, was pushing into Eurasia, how many millions of years ago, um, that once we ran out of subducting crust, now India is pushing against Eurasia and lifting up rock to form the Tibetan Plateau, and then on top of it forming, forming the Himalayan mountains. So as India uh, India um, traveled up towards Eurasia, whereas today it's still pushing northwards and, and pushing up those Himalayan mountains. Well, so there's a closer up. So we have the Indian plate pushing against the Eurasian plate, lifting up the Tibetan plateau and causing uh, development of the Himalayan mountains. Now transform fault boundaries no crust is destroyed and no crust is created. Those, those, um, those plates slide past each other, slide against and past each other. They form transform faults. Most join two segments of mid-ocean ridge and they aid the movement of ocean crustal material. Okay. One uh, famous uh, transform plate um, boundary transform fault is the San Andreas Fault in California. Now how did we test this plate tectonics model to, to um, to prove it enough to become a theory, and one with evidence from ocean drilling. Some of the most convincing element, evidence co confirming seafloor spreading has come from drilling directly into the ocean floor sediment. One, the age of the sediments and the thickness of the ocean floor sediments verify seafloor spreading. Okay. Also, hot spots and mantle plumes caused by rising plumes of mantle material. Uh, volcanoes can form over over these hot spots and mantle plumes, such as the Hawaiian island chain. Mantle plumes are long-lived structures. Some originate at great depth and perhaps at the mantle core boundary. Okay, so, so here, an example of a hot spot where the ocean plate's passing over and slowly the um, Hawaiian islands form. Okay. Another piece of uh, evidence is paleomagnetism. Probably the most persuasive evidence Ancient magnetism preserved in the rocks. Now, paleomagnetic records show that there's polar wandering, um, evidence that the continents had moved, and Earth's magnetic um, field reversals recorded in the rocks that they form at ocean ridges. Okay, so, so as rocks solidify, they retain a memory of where is the North Pole. Okay, they're, they're kind of lined up magnetically, pointing towards the North Pole. And, and the polar the North Pole and the South Pole every once in a while actually shifts and, and the North Pole becomes the South Pole and the South Pole becomes the North Pole and then it shifts again over time. Okay. But anyway, so over time and also that North Pole, that, that pole kind of 
shifts around a little, kind of moves around a bit. So, uh, so if we take the data from rocks and plot out where, from North America and from Eurasia, where uh, was the North Pole, they form these parallel lines pretty much, per pretty much parallel. Now if we move the continents, um, we, if we move the continents and fit them together, these lines converge and form very close, they match up. Okay, showing that, that during this time period, the continents were pushed together in Pang forming Pangaea. You know, the paleomagnetic reversals also get recorded in those basaltic flows. So as new crust is formed, the magma solidifies in the rock, and it's going to, re and it's going to record which direction is, is the North Pole. Okay, is the North Pole in the north? It's going to be positive normal polarity, or, which is going to be the white rock in this diagram. Or is North Pole now the South Pole? And it's reverse polarity. So, is, so that rock's going to be the pink rock. So as these plates diverge, pull apart, and magma forms new rock, with the North Pole normal, you form white rock. Then over time, pulls the crust keeps pulling apart and new magma forms. Well, this is while the poles were reversed. So we have pink rock. And now the poles reverse back to normal polarity. So we're done with this white rock. Okay. So, so this, is, this is very, very strong evidence uh, that uh, new crust is forming as these plates are pulling apart. Measuring plate motion. By using hot spot tracks like those of the Hawaiian Islands and the Emperor's Seamount chain, and also using space age technology to directly measure the relative motion of plates like using GPS and very long baseline inferometry, we, we can actually measure measure and track the direction, the speed of the plates moving and also the direction the plates are moving. So here, these arrows, the longer the plate that the arrow is, the faster the plate's moving, and the arrows are pointing in the direction that they're moving. So an arrow about this long is pointing at about five centimeters a year. Probably about the speed as, uh, as uh, maybe your fingernails will grow. Okay, so some plates are moving faster and others are moving slower. So what drives plate motion? Remember the mechanism was was missing in Wagner's theory. So the driving mechanism of plate tectonics. Well, no one model explains all facets of plate tectonics. Earth's heat is a driving force. Several models have been proposed, and one is the slab pull ridge push model. So a descending ocean crust pulls the plate. The elevated ridge system on the other side of that plate is pushing that plate. Okay. So here we have the weight of that slab. It's it's um, pulling. It's pulling its way down, okay, and 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 the ridges here are pushing that plate in that direction. So it's um, slab, uh, slab pull, and uh, ridge push. Okay. Now plate mantle convection is also another another model. So mantle plumes extend from the mantle core boundary and cause convection. So a mixing of different temperature material. So so warm. The warm magma rises as it, and then, then it gets it cools and slowly sinks. Okay, um, so we, we um, so whole mantle uh, convection is another um, possible driver. Uh, so here we got convection, so cycling of of the warm mantle, and here's the upper mantle convection cycling. Okay, so we're saying that the pushing up of the hot magma is going to be up at the ridge is going to be causing that ridge push. Okay. And where the magma um, is starting to flow downwards, the rock's flowing downwards with the subduction with the um, slab pull. Okay, and here's whole mantle convection. Um, so this is another one where we're thinking that cycling through the whole mantle instead of um, just through the upper uh, 660 kilometers where we need whole convection. So those are two different models of whole mantle convection causing that slab um, pull and ridge push. Plate tectonics into the future. Present day motions have been extrapolated into the future some 50 million years ahead. Areas west of the San Andreas Fault will slide northward past the North American plate and all the way up to, up to Alaska. So instead of California falling to the ocean, uh, just part of California is heading north. Okay, Africa will collide with Eurasia, closing the Mediterranean, initiating more mountain building. Australia and New Guinea are on a collision course with Asia. That's the end of this chapter.